Have you done interviews before? I have, yes. Oh, probably a lot, right? So, yeah. No problem. Yeah, some in college. <laughs> no problem. So, so we're live. So we're live. We're live. Get the thumbs up. We're making it happen. Got it. All right. Welcome. Today we are here with Reed Hrenovich. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Perfect. Nice. So, and uh, Reed is going to be an interesting guy to uh, learn about, and uh, we're really excited nice. about that. Awesome. So, to begin with, kind of break the ice, mm -hmm. this kind of game that we would like to play. Right? Okay. So I'll bring this up and you give the first answer that comes into your head while I'll play. Let's do it. Ready? Okay. Ready, Paul? I'm ready. Favorite season? Summer. Fall. At this moment, summer. Yes. <laughs> right now I'm thinking summer. <laughs> Country or city? Oh boy. Mm. Sweden? Sweden? Um, Sweden, yeah. Nice. I've been there when I was younger and it was amazing. It's very cool. safe and just... Awesome. Well, I tell you what, I'm with you. Sweden's my favorite, my favorite country as well. No way. No Seriously, way. I'm Swedish, no man. Way. I've been. I, I, yeah, I, you're Swedish. Yeah, yeah, I'm Swedish too. Yeah, I've um, I've visited. I've stayed in. I flew into um, Stockholm. Yeah. Stayed in Jönköping, mm -hmm. and I drove all over and took a little. This is before we had our first child. My wife and I flew there. She yeah. was like seven and a half months pregnant. And we like traveled all over Sweden. That's awesome. awesome. I was there. I want to go younger. I have friends that live there too. So Swedish. I had no idea. Swedish. But, wow, man. You and I are in a club now together. So we got this. Yeah. Dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now Leo, you're Norwegian. Norway. 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 Yeah. All right. So okay. Close. Scandinavian. All of us. All right. Yep. Uh, pool or lake? Uh, lake, for sure. Lake. Lake. Yeah. Cranberries. Yes or no? Nope. Yes. I'm gonna say no. I'm more of a you know I'm more of a lingonberry guy. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite kind of music? Um, kind of like a chill electronic dance music. Yeah. Chill hop. Down tempo. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Down tempo. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, Dom. Thanks, Dom. I would have to say. Uh, I like a, a '90s music. I'm totally seasonally driven by music. Um, yeah, I'm seasonally driven. So for me right now, it's been almost all fall and winter, it's jazz. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the summer, I'll go, um, I might drop some 90s in there. Um, or I'll go like uh, island music sometimes. Cuban. I'll go Cuban music sometimes. Cuban music? Yeah. Right. Left or right? Left. I'm left handed. Right. Right handed, yeah. If you were really hungry, would you eat a bug? Huh. I don't think so. I, it depends on the level I of hunger. I don't know. I mean, we'd really have to are dig my, into that. Are we starving? Yeah. Because <laughs> if we're starving... Yeah, if you had to. If we're starving, then, if then I'm yes. If I'm island starving... Well, well if you were really hungry. You just said survival. really hungry. Like, If it's if for I'm, survival, yeah, I'm eating bugs. I don't think at this point in my life Worms. I've not been hungry enough to eat a bug. Yep. I can tell you that. I can say the same. I can say that as well. How hot is this about to be? Although, I would like to eat like a scorpion at one time. Does that count as a bug? I think a scorpion counts as a bug. I mean, depending on the size of the scorpion. Like a barbecued scorpion. I'd like to have some exotic. So I probably would. Exotic foods. Not like your garden variety bug. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. Tomato bug. <laughs> Tomato caterpillar. Oh. Leo just grabbing gnats off the, yeah. off the bananas. That's gross. <laughs> So, Reed, you, have, you are kind of a newer to the industry agent. Yes. And uh, we always do a little bit of prep, like ask some general questions. And actually, I thought this was pretty interesting. I'd like to, to read it to kind of set up how Reed has been starting his business. Is okay. that cool? All right. So you've been in the business since September 2018. Mm -hmm. You had about five or six closings mm -hmm. in that first quarter. And then now you have five closings, three pendings, mm -hmm. and a handful of buyers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. five listings, but yes. And five listings. Got so stuff. that's yeah. that's in 2019. That's mm -hmm. what you have like in the pipeline, so to yep. speak. That's awesome. Correct. Uh, well, let me get that straight. Five yeah. closed in 2019. Mm -hmm. Five listings. Mm -hmm. And how many? Three pending. Three pending. And how many active buyers? Um, seven. 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 That's seven active really buyers. good start 2019. That's a great start. Yeah. yeah. So you currently... Uh, you said uh, you make about 750 contacts per month. Mm -hmm. Cold calling, mm -hmm. door knocking. Can I tell a story about this real quick? Yeah. So we were sitting at a coffee hour and we were talking about ways to build your business and all these kind of things like that. And most people don't really love 
talking about door knocking, it's one of the biggest mm-hmm. things people are afraid of. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna get here, but I want to tell you how I first like what happened to me when I had no, first. that's what so we're I'm gonna talk here. about. So I'm so. sitting here in this in this coffee hour, and Reed's like, "Yeah, I've been doing some door knocking," and everyone's like, "Oh, how's that working out for you?" You know, oh, well, tell us about it, Reed. And so you're like, well, I have this many pending. I have this many. You know, I think it was something like you had like eight new contacts. A couple were under contract. Mm-hmm. And so then I think I said, Reed, how many doors did you knock on to get those transactions? Do you remember the number you told me? Um, it was, boy, it was 500 doors a, a, a month. 500 was my goal. You but had, I was reaching more than that. You, I think, time. I think in the past, I think you had said in, in several months you had knocked on maybe north of 2,000 doors. Yeah, I think and so. I literally, my jaw dropped, and I was like, "You've knocked on how many doors?" And and it was north of 2,000 doors. Yeah. And then, the interesting thing was I I, I went and told my wife this. I was like, I, you're not going to believe this. I was in Muskegon, I was talking, and then Reed brought up how he was door knocking, and I, I told her how many doors he had knocked on. And she was like, jaw drop as well. And then she, her question, because she's not really in real estate, she goes, is that worth it? Mm-hmm. And I said, well, Reed has the same amount of hours in the day as any, one of, any, any other one of us. Mm-hmm. And in the same amount of time given in those three months, Reed has eight new, eight new clients and this many transactions pending. So I would say... That was worth Reed's time. Absolutely worth Reed's time. Do you think it's worth your time? I do. I uh, have been noticing, you know, talking with my dad and stuff. uh, Of recent, I've gotten calls from the follow-ups, from the door knocking and the cold calling in when I was doing that October, October, November type stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're starting to see, obviously, right off the bat, it's not like boom transactions, but you follow up for a few months and, and all these people are turning into, they're calling me. You know, I did a door knock follow up last weekend and I had like a 30 second phone call with them in November Mm -hmm. and they had my card on the fridge from my follow up and they said that in May they're doing it. So, so how many, how many doors have you knocked on like to date since, since since you've started, you're under a year, right? Under a year in the business. I am uh, seventh month now. Seventh month. It's probably, probably north of 3,000 doors and then but now it's shifted to a lot of cold calling okay um, because it's been really cold yeah, and, yeah, uh, to be- less people want to answer their doors right. and then there was the whole uh, uh, when it shifted to the politics season and stuff they mm-hmm. didn't want to answer their doors right so, that's interesting so and I could tell you my cold calling I just cold call out of a normal phone book Yep, and it was a book that I walked past outside of our five star that was kind yeah. of multiple times, and I was just like, you know, today I'm gonna pick it up today and go make cold calls out of it. And so, just you just out of the blue, out of the book. because my dad's made cold calls. Yep. that's and he it's been a big thing of his. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of his business comes yep. from that. So uh, then hmm. I started doing it. So you don't have any like. Uh, What's the what's the service that lets you dial really quick? Red X. Red X. You don't use. You just nope. go. I just go boom boom boom, and then boom boom. boom yeah, over you just, and you over. just like can you just like check them off the like I real cold off, calling. <laughs> real cold calling, and I uh, go, you know, you got a hundred ca- calls per line. People, yeah. you'll probably get uh, ninety of them are good numbers in the phone book, and then how many of those are contacts that you at least get to do your little spiel with, and usually it's about thirty three percent, one in three. So. One in three answer. So you've tracked it down. Oh yeah, always. Got now out of a hundred, out of a hundred phone calls out of the phone book, mm-hmm. one in three answer. Yep. How many of them are actually open to having a conversation? Um, well, one in three answer. That's a good question. I don't know the exact answer to that. All I focus on is is simply leads. Yep. Half leads and full leads. And yep. I will say, out of every forty-five ish contacts, I get a lead. What's a half lead? A half lead is um, I'm going to be doing something in the next maybe year, two years down the road, okay. and then you put them in. But if somebody says they're doing something within like six months here, that's a full lead that you got a hot list. We do have a question for you already. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I want so you have a half lead, which is like someone who's like eh, next year to two yeah. years, and it's my feel of so it. Yeah, how the conversation go? You know, did you like that person? Was there a good rapport here? Right. Did it feel like something? And that that defines whether what kind of a direct mail system they're going to go into, okay. whether it's like a monthly or a quarterly. All right, and then you have the hot lead, which is somebody who's like, I'm definitely doing something. Yeah, they've, like they've said it verbally. I'm going to sell. They've said yeah. that, and within probably six months. Okay. 
So um, someone asks, um, does Reed door knock in a specific area or has he had time to expand as time goes? Like do you knock the same areas all the time or do – and also do you knock a door more, more than once? You mentioned a follow-up door knock. So maybe explain to us, mm-hmm. does it start with a phone call, then a door knock, then a follow-up door knock or how does it work? Yeah, they all go different ways. Everyone's okay. different, right? But um, to start, I do door knock all different areas. Yep. So I've never – cold door knocked the same area twice okay i just go through just like on the the phone book if they didn't answer Mm -hmm. i don't leave a voicemail and i don't haven't called them back again you know they didn't answer then i don't know if they'll answer the next time um but i have a whole spreadsheet of follow-up system so if i get a lead or any kind of a lead i will put their name number all of that stuff what i talk to them about on that day and when i'm following up next okay and you know so march you've got 35 follow-ups it's actually kind of exciting to do all your follow-ups um so i had a cold call that i ended up following up couldn't get in touch with them on the phone so i just went and knocked on their door and said hey and they knew who i was right away because they had seen my card yep um so So you leave something at the house i write a handwritten um letter and send it with my business card for every lead the okay. next morning and send it out. But when you do- door knock, do you leave a card or a door um, knock or hanger, a door hanger? Uh, like that? I, I leave, there's a little uh, Reed Horanowicz with what I offer and certain things like that that I will leave. Yes. Okay. It's like a, a one page sheet. <clears throat> just so after a resume like come up. But. So yep. you're saying anyone that's a lead on the phone gets something in the mail the next day? Yep. Well, hopefully it's the next day, maybe two days. Yeah, yeah. Two days. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's but they sent out the next list. day every time. Yep. So they get a photo of you on your card. And they get a handwritten letter. Handwritten letter. Hey, talked to you on the phone two days ago. Had a yeah. great chat. And his penmanship is amazing. I've is seen it? him write this letter. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Just, just and, then, and then you go and you actually <laughs> knock on the door. They've seen you once because they got your card. Yeah. They spoke. So not only have they spoken to you. Yeah. This is interesting about door knocking. So they've spoken to you. Which is way better. You know? Right. Yeah. So they spoke with you. Then they received a handwritten note from you and your photo. Mm-hmm. And then now that you're on their porch. So it's not like... You're kind of a warm knock at this point. Yeah. That's interesting. It's just, That's it cool. progresses through. Yeah. But the idea is these people are going to do a transaction at some point. They mm-hmm. just told me. I'm kind of trusting them, but all I got to do is be the one that's on their mind when they decide to, to do it. That's really. Yeah. We know that uh, the real estate staff tell us 7.5% of all buyers and sellers will hire the first realtor they talk to. Yeah, a lot. So. Interesting. Okay, I think that's really yeah. fascinating. Uh-huh. What would you, have you, have you honed in? Have you changed your strategies throughout the, the past seven months? I mean, where do you think you'll go next? Well, one thing is, and you talk to some seasoned realtors, right? Yeah. And they get more of their clients through past clients, yep. sphere and different yep. things like that. So I've already noticed the busier I've kind of gotten, it's been harder to get those prospecting hours in like I was. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. before it was just grind mode all the time, didn't have as much going on. Mm-hmm. So now when I'm trying to cold call, it's hard to get as many contacts and I'm trying. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I see just a mix of you go with whatever's working. You know, that's why I got into real estate. You follow the money. Mm-hmm. That's my one little thing. But um, I've noticed that I've shifted more to cold calling than door knocking because you can develop a lot more contacts and conversations. So maybe you do the cold calling first and then you door knock the cold calls, Yep. you know. Okay. And, and I just want to say a lot of this, I've, I've done different things, but it comes from my dad's perspective of, of cold, you know, I'm not a super outgoing realtor yeah. that's out there in the community and all that. I'd rather just grind in an office making calls a lot of the time. So let me give the, let me give the viewers a little history of you. Your, your father has been a realtor for a long time. Mm-hmm. He was also a professional athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, you're very much like your father. Um, Reed played prof- well. You did play some pro golf. But you were you were um, top tier college golfer, U of M golfer. Mm-hmm. You are an introvert mm-hmm. who enjoys the grind. Yeah, you enjoy the grind. You enjoy yeah. the range. You enjoy oh, grinding yeah. it out. You enjoy really dedicating yourself to the perfection of a craft. Yes, absolutely. I would say that. so. That's where you're kind of identifying your personality is not going to be the guy where you walk into a room and you start schmoozing everyone in the room. Yeah. You're gonna be no. You're gonna be nose of the grindstone, nose nose of the grindstone, um, and working. Right. And that works. That's everyone's gonna have something that they offer their clientele or yeah. whatever it is, and that's what I say. I'm. Mm-hmm. 
you know, 24-7, try to say availability, hardworking, always willing, whereas, you know, other people might have other things that they have positive traits. So, and we know in our field, everyone does different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've learned that from a lot of the other agents in my office. There's a few that have, uh, like Brenda Harris has helped me out a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, she's got all of her billboards, and she's very friendly, you know, yep. a lot of good things. Um, and... You know, Megan Gillis has yep. been really nice. She's like a mother to me in the office. Yep. So a lot of and my yeah, dad and good people. You just meet good people. Jane is. So when you got into this business, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, it's a people business." Mm -hmm. Were you were you concerned at all, being knowing yourself well enough that you're an introvert? Were you were you concerned at all that maybe you'd have a tough time in the business, or did your dad show you over the years that like, hey, with the right work ethic? you can be sort of a quieter person but still be really successful in this business. Um, my dad showed me that and then also, I mean, you're somewhat, you're, you're your own boss. Yeah. So that's the one thing that was the, the best, I guess, about the business is I know I have a really good work ethic. Mm -hmm. So if I just can, can do that, I'll find my avenue towards what success will be in this, in this business. Yeah. So I'm trying to pave that way. So. That's very cool. Yeah, and then I will say I'm an introvert um, especially in big groups of people and stuff like that. But in terms of like like this or one-on-one -on -one conversation and stuff, I really enjoy that. Yeah. It's just I'm not like a rah rah yeah. out there in the community all the mm -hmm. time, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. going to bars. You know, just well, like, I think that I think that what I've seen, you know, realtors have. I think that the classic person who's like, I'm going to become a realtor. Like all their friends are like, you should become a realtor because you're so likable and you're mm -hmm. so friendly and you're so loud and you know whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's really interesting that. You know, there's lots of room for lots of personalities in this business, yeah. not just the outgoing person or not just the whatever the stereotypical realtor. So, um, we do have some more questions here, but um, that was I want question to. Uh, this question is coming next, but I want to ask you a question real quick too. Mm -hmm. um, what is your plan to to convert these people into referral leads going forward, or do you have a plan to, to like bring them into the fold? Um, and then try not and not just keep hunting down the next. Uh, how how do you take these people sort of like roll them into your sphere and then get their referrals going forward? Great question. I don't. Well, one thing is if you do a really good job, mm -hmm. hopefully that will come right. Yeah. So I've had clients already that have said, you know, could you pass me on some more cards? You know, I, obviously at my age, I work with a lot of first-time home buyers, and they have friends that are yeah. looking through that, and then you go through the pre-approval process and all that. So you just provide the best service so that they want to recommend you. Um, so that's the main thing. But I will say, in terms of, um, I remember, uh, is it Micah? Micah Childress. Yeah, you know, the first the first meeting I ever went to, end of August, mm -hmm. he said he does a a, a two day. Um, what is it? Two day, two week, two month type follow up yep. with them, and I have been doing that. Cool. And then on that two month follow up, I, I get a little bit. It's been a while, so I get a little more in terms of, um, you know, do you have any other people looking to do real estate? And if so, um, I'd love to be their agent or help them out, and then send them some cards. Yeah. But other than that, I haven't thought. You know, I haven't developed a system or strategies yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, I haven't had that many closings yep. yet. So, but moving forward, it's going to become more and more important. Yeah. Um, but staying in touch with those people, providing the best service, it so far seems to yeah. you know work for the most part. Cool. Uh, All right. The question yeah. is, I won't, I think it's a, it's a two part. Yeah, two part question. What does a what does it sound like when you when you cold call someone, and what does it sound like when you door knock? What do you, what's your what are you saying? Uh, How do you yeah. not get hung up on? Um, Did you learn scripts or do you go from the hip? Got one. Uh, you don't have to little, give us all your one secrets, little but, script for yeah. cold calling, yeah. and I've tried many different ones on my own. Yeah. But the simplest one that my dad um, has always done, and I'll just go. I'm not going to say the exact yeah, script, sure. But uh, just five star real estate and uh, looking for homes to sell in the area. Blah blah. Some other things. Yep. Simple. You can either ask, you can be more aggressive and say, um, have you had any thoughts of selling? Mm -hmm. Or you can be a little bit more off and say, do you know of anybody you know that might be selling? You know? Yeah. And then it just depends on how they're talking to you to feel out the conversation. Working and uh, no other script than that. Door knocking is introducing my name and mm -hmm. myself 
And when I door knock, I am providing value because it's in person. Yeah. Um, so I have a, a sheet with market updates in their area and why it's been so good and why selling might be a good option. Mm -hmm. And then just asking them, um, usually do you know of anybody that might be selling? Because if they know of anybody and if it's their themselves, they're gonna tell me. So yeah. And yeah. rather than saying, are you selling and yeah. coming a little bit more pushy. Yeah. So that's okay. how uh, that that's goes. And you just, you know, you get rejected a lot and a lot and it can be a little discouraging sometimes, but then you'll just get two out of four doors or two out of five calls, you get two leads and you're like, boom, you're back in. Boom. And that, if you follow up with those leads and, and they're yours, you know, six months from now, the, all the calling, it will be worth it. So, yeah. hmm. just, but the calling's worth nothing if you have no follow-up strategy. Yeah, so if you just yeah. call, it's, 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 like, it's a waste of time. Why do it? And a lot of my transactions so far have not been necessarily from the cold calling and the door knocking, yeah. but now I'm starting to see that stuff pay off because I'm getting calls back from yeah. some of these cold calls. And it's not even, we're selling right now, but it's asking some advice or questions about in the future they're selling and obviously they're calling me back, the realtor they talked to four months ago. So that's a good sign. So cold calling and door knocking is less of like, it's it's not that immediate gratification. It's not instant yeah. sales, right? right? It's not like going into an open house and then meeting a buyer who's like, yes, I want to go buy this house over here tomorrow, let's go. Right. Um, it's dedication. It's a lot of time. Trust in the process. Yeah, so. you have to trust that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. So how many, how many hours a week do you dedicate to the cold calling aspect or like the prospecting yeah. aspect of your prospecting business? aspect? Um, I I was I knew you'd probably ask that. Probably fifteen ish. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, you know, you try to do about three hours a day. Um, oh, sorry, probably eighteen because Saturdays yeah. you prospect too. Those are great times to call and door knock Saturdays. But uh, that's the that's no the weekends, goal, guys. Morning, yeah. evening. <laughs> Um, the best time way. is like four to six and then 10 to 12. So 10 to 12 in the morning and four to six. Yeah. Those are yeah. easily. If you um, were on my door at 8.30, I'd be a little annoyed with you Yeah, on a Saturday. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you came at 10. Be, right. I've had a cup of coffee. I've had better. my kids some breakfast. Yeah. yeah. 10 the best day. All of those like leads that you haven't been able to follow up with, mm -hmm. just go out there and knock on all their doors all day and you'll get some. And like I told my dad last weekend, if I just get one like really good positive thing from today where I talk to somebody and they yep. have my card in their fridge, they're selling in a month, then that day was 100% absolutely good and worth it. So Imagine if you had one of those interactions every single day. Every day, that's what I always you'd have think. Been, of. You would, you would, you'd be breaking some records, right? If mm -hmm. you had one of those interactions every single day? Right. Yeah, it'd be incredible. Great. The, the hard part is finding time to prospect. So like my goal is always 750 contacts a month cold calling. I did that in January. And then in February and March here, it's been in the upper 400s and then in the upper 500s. And I've found like, I've really got to make sure I'm setting that, blocking that time out. And even while I'm cold calling, like you have your transactions going and you're getting a realtor calling you and you answer it but sometimes you got to just mm -hmm. it's like you're in an appointment and you just can't answer you just got to keep calling how would you I have a question. Question. Uh, so do you have any like sphere that you interact with or social media or is that is is, yeah. is this type of prospecting the only thing or the main thing Facebook yeah I, I, I do some stuff well I did do um, cuz you grew up some, in Muskegon right yep I grew okay. up in Muskegon so you know people yeah well to be honest most of my buyers right now are are people that I grew up with that I didn't have a lot of talk or connections with, but they know I'm a, a realtor and, and I had reached out to them, my sphere mm -hmm. on Facebook, Facebook friends and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been another, another thing. Um, I think it's really just that. And then I ran some Facebook ad campaigns and that was one thing I remember. Yeah, I ran I some fa that. Facebook ad campaigns cheap 30 yeah. bucks and you know free home evaluations and basically they fill out their information and I show up like on their doorstep sometimes like three four <laughs> hours later and they're like what's yeah, going on amazing. here and but they like that you're that proactive they're yeah. like oh I thought I, I was just gonna get an email yeah. you know or something nope I'm right there and wow. I got I did get a couple clients and I got a transaction from that and then one of my listings is from a, one of the Facebook things too. So. Sweet. But I'm just still feeling out what's 
most productive, what's the yeah. best, and um, you know, gotten some sign calls. You know, those those lead to things, and just got to keep generating. I love it. So, what would you tell someone right now who like? How would you encourage someone to give this a shot if they were like? Ah. Well, um, I think anybody starting out and that is newer, right? right? And you have this whole work your sphere approach, yep. which is great, but you've got to get out there and do something that's cold. Yep. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but when you're starting off and you're newer, your sphere, I mean, there's only so many people in your sphere that are going to be doing a real estate transaction. And there's right. plenty of others out there. Look at how many people there are in, in Michigan or in West mm -hmm. Michigan that are gonna be needing an agent. So you gotta go get uncomfortable and prospect and get cold mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. it. And uh, there's a new agent that just came on, Jared Karnitz, who's yep. my buddy. We played hockey together. He's been cold calling. And I'll tell everybody this right now, um, in his first week cold calling, he got a lead, went over there, set an appointment, and then it just got an offer pending on the first day. Nice. Multiple offer situation. That's and awesome. that's within a month that a cold call, I was almost jealous because, you know, yeah. <laughs> I they wanted my Such first quick call. success. Just quick, you know, yeah. but he would have never known or co come in yeah. contact with that person. Yeah. And he was uncomfortable a bit cold calling. So yeah. that's what I you know, would say to get involved and in it. And I would say, just like anything, you kind of weasel your way into it. Don't yeah. just go hard. Maybe like, you yeah. know, me, that's my personality, but try some of it. Um, yeah. I would say even, you know, there's a lot of people that said they don't call expireds or for sale by owners and stuff. Yep. I mean, mine are even colder than that, but, yep. but do those. Mm -hmm. That's another thing is a couple expireds, you know, that I had. So, um, you just got to get out there. And I think you make. I think I, you make a really good point, though. You know, um, Sphere is awesome, right? And there's certain people right now whose entire businesses are based upon Sphere. Yeah. But you're right when you're when you're starting brand new, when and you have to make new, something yeah. happen. Yeah. Right. You yeah. need something to happen for you right now. Right. And of the hundred people you know, maybe one or two are maybe moving right now. Right. But what else are you gonna do? Right. And I think that's really cool that you've identified that. Um, gotta get cold with it. Gotta get cold with it. You gotta get, you gotta get cold <laughs> with it. And I think as I go on, the cold will, yeah, will down a little bit, and then you've got all that business. But that's when you hire, uh, when you have a team, yep. and then they get cold. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I've, now I'm that's gonna cool. say that all the time. That's right. We gotta get cold with it, guys. Yeah. We gotta get cold with it. Let's go. We gotta find people. Let's go. Man, I think that's, I think that's really cool. Um. I think Andy Smith said something like that when we were off camera. He's like, it's amazing. The more people I call, the more people I help. Yeah. And that's, that's basically right. yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And you get the people because you call so many people. Oh, I was, I was just thinking about this today or last <laughs> night. How did you know to call? Well, uh, coincidentally, Honestly, eventually you're going to run into somebody yeah. that's thinking about it, that you call yeah. on that time, Absolutely. and it just makes sense. I mean, it's going to happen. It's a numbers game. It's an, it it's, is a numbers it's, game. It's going to happen. Wow. Well, you, I, I'm not sure there's anyone else that I know that has, has been as dedicated to it as you. Um, yeah. or maybe other than your father. My dad. He's, what are his goals? For, um, how many people does he cold call in a, in a month? Does he still cold call he, a lot? Yeah, he does. He doesn't uh, track the numbers okay. like me. I will say he, in one day, he told me a while back when he was starting off, he made 170 contacts calling in one day. So however many calls that is. You yeah. Know. <laughs> and so I, I, there was one day, it was in uh, November, December, where I called 171. I got 171 nice. contacts, and then I stopped. You said. I said, <laughs> now Dad, it's here's me. my, here's my <laughs> list. I just here's my that. list, and I had it on my board there. And that's, that's like, that was like 12 hours of just calling all one day. I didn't have much going on. You know, I had like maybe one pending at that time or something. So just call all day. So the goal is, the goal is to have one positive contact per day that's you know it ends up being more than that yeah. usually but that's the goal if you just yeah. stick with that goal all the time at the end of the year that's three well minus your sunday well even sunday so 365 yeah. that great contacts per year great contacts. so you don't <laughs> struggle from not knowing what to do today no you never get to the office and like i did at the start a little okay. bit yeah and always would say to my dad and there's is there something else i could be doing here 
because in terms of like I don't do anything other than just work and work out like we said yeah. fitness and um, so you know is there anything else I can be doing and uh, but now I don't ask that question anymore because you've been in it six months or so yeah. and um, I know I've got my whole schedule of things and but you start getting busy enough where you don't get to everything on yeah. your schedule every day and you yeah. push it off yeah but that's yeah. a good thing you know yeah so I think a lot of people struggle with like coming in or being like what, what do I do today yeah what do I do like I'm yeah. a realtor I'm in this business no one's telling you what to do mm -hmm. so if you have this in your back pocket where you know okay well I've got a slow day today. I've got a light day today. Maybe you don't have a bunch of showings that day. Right. You'll cold call that day. That's what I do. If, if there's nothing going on, I just cold call because I really don't know what else to make the, the and what else would be. What would you make the time up with? It's right there. There's a book and a phone. That's all it takes. There's no money involved. That's the other thing is with these with this process, your expenses as a realtor are like next to nothing. Yeah. Right. Other than your direct mail follow up and your note card writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, no, no Zillow, you know, yeah. or all that, which gets very expensive. So. I, have, I have one final question, okay. and it's um, mm -hmm. sure. so when I started out, I did cold calling and door knocking like that, and I had that experience. When is it hard for you to start? Do you have to get to five, or do you dread it, or do you lean into it? Um, I've noticed that I dread it a little bit more, a little bit now just because you've got a lot more really good things going on. So now I gotta go back and cold call. If you're weighing your day, you're like, if you're weighing it, fun. you know, well, you'd rather have somebody tell you, I'm looking to sell my house and go to a listing appointment. Yeah. But then again, you just gotta keep reminding yourself that uh, the reason that you're getting those listing appointments and all that is because of the structure that you've built yeah. and the prospecting and the calling. And you, you always have to, just have to do that. Um, I, it's hard when you get a few like bad people in a row yeah. that are just not nice. You gotta take a deep breath and you just gotta keep calling the next person. Also, while you call, you can do something else. You do your script, you're waiting for the phone to ring or whatever, you can have something else going. I write some note cards sometimes while I'm calling. So that takes your, mm -hmm. the dread out yeah. of it rather than just dial yeah. a call, dial a call yeah. all day. So that's hmm. my answer to that. But. Um, someone asks, you were at Ninja in September. What oh, yeah. what Ninja techniques do you employ? Yeah, so I uh, I employ, I had already been doing some of it, but affirmations and goals, write them down every single morning, mm -hmm. um, which I think is very important, at least the goals, just to look or write them down. Um, and then uh, real estate reviews is something that Ninja does where you're mm -hmm. picking two clients per week and giving them an annual real estate review and talking with them. Yeah, that's cool. It ends up being a lot more than two kind of for me because I think that's one of my bigger things too mm -hmm. is to do that. Um, the one thing I'll say about Ninja, Ninja is great. Ninja doesn't talk as much about prospecting. They talk about working your sphere. Flow. So I think once you have business, if you develop this Ninja flow strategy, it's prime, it's, it's great, but do you have the business yet? Mm -hmm. You know, um, because like we said, you gotta start by doing something cold calling for me as a newer agent. If you're a seasoned agent and you've had all your past clients like my dad and all that, well, I tell my dad all the ninja strategies about past clients, note card writing. Mm -hmm. um, and he's been doing a lot more of that stuff to get involved with those people. Yeah. Um, which is really big for Ninja. And Ninja's all about providing value not being super pushy mm -hmm. okay um which i like that too it, it's just there's a mix of everything um ninja is just another way another way to go about it the note card writing is very important i do it with my leads mm -hmm. and um because i wasn't having but ninja also you uh do note card writing to just your sphere just let them know how you're doing you know yep. what's up you know yeah. birthday card you know whatever it might be mm -hmm. and i have done some of that yeah. as well but it's a lot of note card writing on top of all the note card writing for the leads so, so you, we'll see you know but what you what, what, really what your approach is is it's um you're taking a multi-faceted approach yeah because you're like i i don't want to wait for ninja to work exactly you believe you just, ninja you just, works. i believe it works i don't want to yeah but you want you need you need to, you need to inject that with some. I actual need I need uh, ninja won't work as 
as well, it would take about maybe three years, but if I can make Ninja work in one year, it's gonna mm -hmm. be much more beneficial. And the reason I need a, a bigger sphere and leads to work off of to make Ninja work. Yep. You know, so you gotta grow it first. Do you yeah. work eight hours a day? I work a lot more yeah. than eight hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you yeah. in the office before eight, yeah. and then uh, you work all day until my dad and I are the last ones there, and Jane, you know, yeah. until seven or whatever. And I know plenty of agents work yeah. from home. I yeah. prefer the office. Yeah. And then you work on weekends. But uh, I don't have much else to do. So yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just like to do that and then go work out. And but if, you, but if you're working eight hours a day, you can, you're executing Ninja, you're executing your cold calling strategies, you're executing some of your Facebook strategies, you're executing yeah. quite a few things at once, which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot going on. Yeah. It's but a lot of hours to fill, but it's good. It's a lot of hours to fill, and uh, if a couple of them aren't working as well, those strategies, well, all you need is really like one of them to be hitting mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. If you got a lot more options, you know. It reminds me of, of my uncle who uh, goes out salmon fishing, and when we go, we're running like eight lines, right? Yeah, right. You're running, you're, you're, you're bouncing some lines along the bottom. You're floating some way out mm -hmm. along the surface looking for maybe it's lake trout or something like yeah. that. And so you're, you're running different depths in different, different uh, areas to see who's biting that day. Who's biting that day. And maybe over time, as I become a little bit more seasoned, I'll realize specific times a year there's better things. Mm -hmm. There's things that work better. Um, all that and you just kind of that's why you take you track you know yep. your calls and and all that stuff or whatever it is you got a good follow-up system and see what works the best but sometimes you got to lower your lines down get cold with it you got to get cold <laughs> with it. there we go you got to go all the way down to the bottom of the lake and get cold all with it. the way at the bottom <laughs> that's good i like that analogy it's <laughs> good it's good so, oh man any final questions uh, I don't think so, um, but we've had some, some a good viewership here and uh, quite a few watching. So good, um, well, Reed, Thank you. I think it's been Absolutely super helpful. Good. I think people who, I think a lot of people are going to get some some <clears throat> stuff from this. So thank you very much for your time. Yeah, of course. Give you That's the great. old Swedish high five from yes. across the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right, everybody. Thanks That's for it. tuning in. Thanks, this is Reed. Uh, he's on the Facebook page. If you have any questions for him? Fire him off in here, and we'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Sounds okay. good. See ya. That's it.